some classics should not be touched. Like 80s classics, I know they're going to get to remaking, rebooting, and serializing just about every 80s classic movie. Eventually, eventually. Some just don't need a reboot. I hold Beverly Hills Cop and Hannah Garner, even like the two sequels. This reboot though was unnecessary and I don't like it. Here is my review of Axel. Eddie Murphy is back almost 40 years to the day when he first began playing Detroit Cop. Axel Foley, and his day ones have returned as well. Judge Reinhold is back as Beverly Hills Cop, Rosewood, and John Ashton as Taggart, who's now the police chief in Beverly Hills. And Bronson Pinchot returns as Serge. Now there are some new faces to this reboot, including Taylor Page, who is Axel Foley's estranged daughter and a half-powered defense attorney. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is a Beverly Hills cop. He is also the love interest of Taylor Page. Kevin Bacon is a villain. Comedy legend Paul Reiser joins the cast as a higher up within the LAPD. And there are micro cameos from Louise Gussman and Apion Crockett. Now this was directed by a commercial director by the name of Mark Malloy. And I think for the most part, he did good capturing the essence of Beverly Hills, even though most of this is not set in Beverly Hills. But I like the contrast that he makes between the archival Beverly Hills and Detroit as compared to now. So for the most part, I think he did a good job. It's titled Axel F, not because the titular character is Axel Foley, but in 84, the theme song composed by Harold Faltmeyer Play, is played throughout this film. It's an electronic, up-tempo, break dance, pop-locking classic that is repeated over and over and over again to really juice up the scenes for nostalgic effect. And it works, but that's why it's titled Axel F because of the intermittent score from the original Beverly Hills Cop. This seemed like it was an effort to get the gang back together for a reunion. And if that were the case, they could have had a podcast or a round table because it feels a little amateurish, especially in the story. So Eddie Murphy, still a Detroit cop. He's in his 60s now. He's still a Detroit cop. His daughter, who is a high powered defense attorney, played by Taylor Page, is in Beverly Hills and she gets into some trouble. So he's got to go to Beverly Hills to save her. Now, they are estranged. Their relationship is rocky, but he goes there to save his daughter and he recruits, you know, his old gang, Taggart and Rosewood, to help him protect his daughter. His daughter is in trouble because she is defending an accused cop killer who is some, I mean, it's obvious that he's innocent and she's got to exonerate his name. You've seen this play out. If you've been around since the 80s, movies from the 80s, 90s, 2000s, you've seen this play out before. The plot is so old and tired and recycled where there are these drug dealers who are smuggling or moving their drugs using, uh, not mannequins, but like art pieces and they use an inside man, a connection within the LAPD to fend off the cops. I mean, how many times have we seen this plot play out? And, you know, Kevin Bacon plays the villain and he's very villainy in the way that is very cartoonish and mustache twirly. We know he's the villain early on. We know he's the inside man. Knowing all of this, like from scene one, makes it anticlimactic because the third act is just because we've seen this play out so many times, it just seemed so, I don't know, it, it just amateurish, as I said. And a lot of the scenes just seem to happen. Not much of the story is moving, which again is why they're replaying Axel F, the, the song. They're replaying it in almost every scene to liven up or juice these scenes because nothing is really happening. The comedy wasn't tight and strong and really laugh out loud funny. I laughed a couple of times and I did like a couple of scenes. I liked the helicopter scene. I think that was shot good. There were practical effects. And so though that was shot good. I loved Bronson Pinchot's scenes, but I was never convinced that 
Eddie Murphy still Axel Foley. <laughs> it, he seemed to be playing an impersonation of Axel Foley instead of inhabiting, re-inhabiting the character, like reviving it in a way that seemed like a continuation. It seemed to be an impersonation of Axel Foley in his 20s than a continuation of a more seasoned Axel Foley who is more aware. He gets into the same troubles and responds as if he is that Axel Foley instead of someone who is more mature in many ways. And there's some bleed over because a lot of times I recognize some character traits of Prince Akeem from Coming to America and Professor Clark from Nutty Professor. I saw some of the traits from those characters bleed over into this one. So there was some confusion there. I was never convinced that Joseph Gordon-Levitt is in love with Taylor Page's character, that they had a relationship because there's no chemistry there. And I wasn't convinced that he is a Beverly Hills cop detective. He seemed to be a step behind Axel Foley anyway. And it seemed out of place. There's no chemistry between Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Eddie Murphy either. It just didn't seem as natural, especially in the comedy bits the way that Judge Reinhold and John Ashton's chemistry was with Eddie Murphy in the original Beverly Hills Cop. It wasn't there. It felt awkward. I was also not convinced that Taylor Page is this high-powered defense attorney representing this cop killer that would have so much media attention. Like, there's even this scene. There's a scene where, you know, she's just one-upped the, the prosecution and she goes to her car and the bad boys are there and they push her vehicle off of the parking deck really high up and her vehicle is dangling vertically all of her legal documents fall plummet really to the ground below her somehow she's rescued and then a couple of scenes later it's as if the bad guys aren't even after her like it's just like nothing happened and somehow she finds her documents that had exploded on the ground before her physical documents listen i think if they wanted to revive this franchise i think it would have been better to serialize taggart and rosewood or Bronson Pinchot's character, Serge. Serialize or give them a spinoff somehow, I think that would have worked a whole lot better than this because this feels like a money grab. It, it does look like Netflix backed up the Brinks truck to make sure that this got the type of action sequences a movie like this deserves, but I don't think it was an effective in a way of complementing the IP that's so beloved as Beverly Hills Cop. What Eddie Murphy does in 84, in the 80s really, with Coming to America and Beverly Hills Cop, Trading Places, you know, he has navigated the movie industry in a way that is not self-indulgent because he made sure to take comedians along with him and black actors. He is the reason, or really, he had the first two major blockbusters with a black lead since they've been tracking box offices. And he didn't do it for selfish reasons. He made sure that everybody he knew ate, all of the comedians, all of the black people. He wanted to make it so that they all could get their projects greenlit, coming off of a time when black exploitation was dying. And he was able to sell even overseas and you know we have will smith coming along and lifting that mantle using the sauce that and, and really the infrastructure that eddie murphy built and he uses you know some sauce from tom cruise to become the box office king of the 90s and 2000s like that's all thanks to eddie murphy and his legacy will always be that i just feel like this was unnecessary. If they touch trading places, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, they're already remaking plane trains and automobiles. Like, they're going to get to all of the 80s classics eventually. And I'm sad about that. Disappointed. <laughs> At any rate, that's my rant. It's already number one on Netflix. It's accessible. I would have seen it if it were in the theaters too. But I just, 
gosh, it's just exhausting. Like, they got to come up with some originality. Like, there are no other plots. They keep recycling the same plots over and over again. And it's sucking out the movie going or movie viewing experience because it feels like been there, done that. At any rate, Beverly Hills Cop 4, <laughs> Axel F, is currently streaming on Netflix.